and good day, eh? Welcome to the Super Good Camping Podcast. My name is Pamela. I'm Tim. And we are from supergoodcamping.com. We are here because we are on a mission to inspire other families to enjoy camping adventures such as we have with our kids. As we speak, currently there are over 400 wildfires burning in Canada. Uh, Campfires are an integral part of the Canadian camping experience. They give us warmth and ambiance and a gathering spot for everybody at the end of the day, but it's crucial to prioritize safety so that we prevent accidents and we protect our beautiful forests. Uh, So we wanted to talk about essential safety tips and guidelines for when you're camping as far as fire safety, what to do about fire bans and fire restrictions, and proactive measures for keeping our forests safe. So for, for our first tip as far as campfire safety, first of all, know the regulations. So know for where you're going camping what the current regulations are because they can change day to day. It might have been fine yesterday, but it's not necessarily fine today. They can vary from one place to another, from a provincial park to a conservation area to a private campground. And so you want to stay up up to date and it might change even while you're out camping. So you've been there for a couple of days and then suddenly there's a fire ban that wasn't there before. So during periods of higher fire risk, fire bans or restrictions might be implemented by the local authorities or by the park management. Uh, The bans are there to minimize the risk to the forest and to protect natural resources. So stay informed about the fire bans. And like I said, they might change even while you're out camping. So you can check with the local authorities. You can check with park websites or even just check in with the camp staff and just see what what the current restrictions are. Yeah, there's usually uh, prominent displays uh, along the side of the road. If you're in a park, they're going to display it up at the... uh, the welcome, the the entrance to the park, uh, they often will put them up at notification stations throughout the park. You know, I get that there's not always going to be cell signal service, uh, if you're, especially if you're backcountry camping or you're camping uh, on Crown Land. Maybe use your brain. Uh, if it feels <laughs> if it feels dry, or you've been hearing about all kinds of crazy amounts of camp uh, uh, wildfires going on, it's, you know resources are going to be stretched. Uh, they may implement a fire ban simply because they don't have enough 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 teams, uh, uh, enough equipment to to fight fires. So so don't you know if you don't need to do it, don't do it. Take uh, well. So let's let's continue on with the how to how to continue how to do it safely right so uh choose a safe location you know look at uh assuming there's no fire ban in place you know look at the the camps is it is there a metal ring that you can put you know can it contains your fire um and if there is can you is you know if there's a bunch of dry leaves and whatnot around maybe you can clear those leaves away so there's less chance of something unplanned going on you know make sure yeah make sure you're far away from as far away as you can be you know i would say maybe three meters or for those of you south of the border nine ten feet from a from a from a tent uh, trees you know look up see if there's a dangling branch up there that's that has the you know an ember's going to go up and catch in that sort of thing that's the thing sparks will fly out of your metal fire pit ring so it might not be that you're doing anything wrong you've got your fire in your ring but it's still your sparks are coming out and it's landing on some dry twigs and then suddenly you're spreading fire Uh, So prepare your site, clear away, that's along those lines, clear away any dry leaves, debris, overhanging branches, something that might catch fire. Having a shovel handy so that you can create even a ring around your fire pit to remove any vegetation and and any chance of, of that fire spreading. Right. So I just want to throw in there, fires don't just burn up. They can often, like, part of the reason we have as many wildfires burning as we do is from uh, simple things like a lightning strike, which doesn't necessarily ignite right away, but but travels down the tree, through the roots, and underground, where there is still plenty of burn well material, but it smolders for, you know, three, four, five days, then it bursts out. Same thing can happen with your fire pit if it's not located properly, if you're in a, for sake of argument, if you're in a back country and you've made one out of a nice ring of rocks, that's all great above ground. It doesn't do a darn thing for anything under the ground. If, if there's some roots there that, that get hot, super hot and start, you know, smoldering away underneath, it can pop up way over there somewhere and you, you don't know. I think you guys actually found a site like that one time, didn't you? Where there was there was a ring where people had had their campfire and you actually found some smoldering. Elsewhere, yep. So, yeah, keep prepared the site. Make sure that you've chosen a good area, but also try to clear anything that might catch 
fire, keep it contained. So either a fire pit with rocks or the metal ring that's already there provided by, by the park. And just try to keep the fire small and manageable. We've seen people with fires that were just like, I don't know how much wood they put in that thing, but it was way. Buddy rolled in with a pickup truck full. The entire bed was full of wood. And, and it was like, how how many weeks are you staying? You can only book 23 days, man. <laughs> Yes. Like that's crazy. Yes. Anyway, it was. It was just, it was just log after log going in. Oh, you know, six foot flames. Yeah. That's that, okay. Each to their own. But come on. Well, it's fun, but it's not, it's also not really expensive. Yeah. So yeah, I never leave the fire unattended. So that seems pretty straightforward. However, people do stuff like that. They, you know, they they wander away. They had their breakfast, cooked their meal over their fire, and then went off to the beach and just left. Uh, smoldering, like even if it's just smoldering, it still it has a potential to catch, and then it has a potential to spread. So yeah, don't don't leave it uh, unattended, or don't leave it in charge of you know your four year old. Uh, the make sure that you've got something to put the fire out should anything happen or at the end of the night at the at the end of your burn time however that works out uh, thomas and i it's, we before we even light the fire we already have a bucket of water sitting near to the fire ready to ready to deal with any emergencies or so i don't have to you know stumble around in the dark and, and try to fall in the water while i'm getting a bucket of water you know that sort of deal um, yeah and really douse that fire like you want it to be soaked yeah. Just little embers they can catch. They will go again, you bet. And then proper firewood selection. So using you know, using the appropriate firewood. But here in Ontario, especially, we're not supposed to transport firewood from one place to another because of emerald ash borer. And so moving that, if we brought uh, trees from here in Toronto up to up to Killarney when we're camping, we could be transporting emerald ash borer, and they are just devastating to the trees. Yeah, it, it, that's that's the idea. Invasive species. So yeah, don't try not to burn treated wood. The, the chemicals that are on that are not right. necessarily good for you to be breathing yeah. that, or for don't, wildlife to be breathing. Don't it don't pressure treated wood. Bad. Don't don't burn that stuff. You're 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 killing yourself, and you're it's it's doing a terrible thing for the environment. Think about how you're going to light your fire. Don't don't be I, you know. There's a Bill Cosby joke where he says, "Give me two gallon gasoline." Now that's a fire. <laughs> don't be that guy. Don't don't do it. You know, use 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 a, a newspaper, bit of newspaper, uh, uh, some some bits of. If you're if you're not front country and you can collect up a bit of birch bark, uh, that's perfect. That's a great thing. Use your use your our our, our friends at uh, Cool Quest uh, are big big fans of uh, Mickwick fire starters. You know that's a perfect thing, uh, uh, or make your own for that matter. You know it's it's something that won't flame out of control, but it will do the job that you need it to do. Perfect, easy peasy. Don't uh, don't use chemicals and stuff to dryer lint. There's a use for that stuff. That, there you go, dryer lint, paraffin wax. And wood shavings, and and well, and stick a wick in it. I guess that's your that's that's your homemade version, and that's there's your tip for today. Uh, supervision, excellent. Yeah. So again, always make sure that your fire is uh, being supervised and not by a by a four year old, by a four year old, <laughs> or, or or an adult that's had enough beers to have the mental capacity of a four year old. <laughs> Wind considerations. Uh, Man, if it's really windy, don't do it. You're guaranteed to be blowing embers about. Like it, 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 there's no way around it. You can't make a fire pit that won't. So, give some thought to that, uh, and look to where the wind's blowing. So, if the wind's blowing, even if it's a, a lightish wind, but it's blowing towards, like it's blow from, from say from the east, and your tent is on the west side of the fire pit, that's going to be problematic. You're going to have little holes to repair in your tent. Uh, respecting your neighbors so just if you are uh, having a campfire and people tend to get sometimes a bit animated around the campfire maybe just make, respect the fact that by you know 10 o'clock or so maybe your neighbors don't want to be listening to you singing and the campfire song the, so the safety aspect there is you don't want to get thumped by your neighbor <laughs> uh leave no trace be be a responsible camper clean up after yourself Make sure, again, make sure you have absolutely drowned that fire or buried it in sand. Again, starvation works equally well, but water water's guaranteed if you put enough on. Uh, don't, uh, you know, don't don't dispose of garbage in, in the fire. And, and I will 
this is me raising my hand. I take take absolute. Uh, I get to wear a bunch of this because that's what I used to do with a lot of our our crap. So we didn't have to pack it out from the back country. So so I didn't have to take another trip to the garbage, or or we didn't have to have some stinky something in the in the trunk uh, while we slept. Don't do it. Just just it's garbage. It goes in the garbage. It doesn't go in your fire pit, and you don't know. I mean, melty plastic. That stuff's hard to hard to douse and, and nasty, and it's not good for your lungs. No. You know, I leave the natural surroundings undisturbed. Yeah, so there's very minor differences between car camping campfires and backcountry camping campfires, but front country mostly you're just having this designated fire pit, which is your metal ring, uh, and other like private camp- campgrounds may have similar where they have a designated area where you're to have your campfire uh, and just adhering to the campfire safety tips that we talked about and following any regulations and any fire bans that might be going on right and and just i'm not sure if we mentioned it uh, with the regulations they're put out by municipalities there is a provincial bit of business that happens it's there, uh, there's too many too many levels of government sometimes um make sure you check all of those things and there are times where there may be a fire ban in place because again because they, they don't have the resources to, to deal with it but uh, perhaps a provincial park may let you do cooking fires only from say f- you know 5 p.m to, to 7 p.m or something like that I've seen I've seen that happen um, because they do have the resources to deal with a, any sort of small flare-up that might happen inside the park so you can check that as well. When when there is a fire ban, you're allowed to do something like a like a burner, Coleman burner, or something that you can cook your food on, right? Right. So you you're not you're never left you're never left. I don't know what the right term is, shafted, uh, it, because you do need to be able to eat. You do need to be able to stay warm if conditions re- require that. So anything that has an on off valve, um, usually we're talking about a, a gas canister, um, like a propane mini stove uh oh what's white fuel so camping fuel you know you pump it up and and you can run your coleman stove off of it remember the old green ones with the red tank on them uh for those of you that aren't youngsters uh although they may still make those yes all right cool um uh, you can do you can do an alcohol stove, so you can do whatever uh, your twig stove, but but drop a can of that uh, that gel alcohol stuff that you use in chafing dishes. As long as you have the lid, because it will snuff that fire out. That's the whole thing. That so you need to be able to shut it down immediately. That's the that's the win. I there are there is a charcoal thing, but I don't think that that's in in campgrounds. I think that's only on your own private property, and there's a lot of designations you have to be within. I don't even remember X amount of yards or X amount of meters from, from a, a, a permanent dwelling. It has to be your own property, all that sort of jazz. So, and charcoal's charcoal's not as bad, but it's still, you still get embers. If you blow on that puppy, there's stuff going up in the air. So yeah. Yeah. So a small contained fire that you can turn on and off is, is allowed sometimes when there's a fire ban. That's it. Uh, back and tree camping. So just, uh, ex- it, you might be setting up your own fire pit in that situation. Uh, check if campfires are even allowed in the area they're planning to be. In some regions, campfires might be restricted just because of environmental sensitivities. And uh, you use your portable stoves for cooking and warmth instead, following the leave no trace principles always. Right, and 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 I will cycle circle back on that again. Use use common sense as well. When hopefully it's common. If 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 it was looking dicey when you left and you don't have a cell signal in the backcountry to check what the new restrictions are, if it feels dry, if you're smelling smoke, you know, try not to do it. Uh, yeah. I, we, I, Thomas and I carry, carry the options to be able to cook over a campfire and cook uh, on our, uh, what is it, pocket rocket, right? It, it gives, us, gives us options in case of either situation. So, yeah. That's it for us for today. We hope you're staying safe and forest fire free at the moment. Um, We'll talk to you again soon. I'm Pamela. I'm Tim. And we are from supergoodcamping.com. Please do reach out to us. We are on all the social media. We would love to hear from you. And you can email us at any time at hi at supergoodcamping.com. That's hi at supergoodcamping.com. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Bye.